guys, we are here at the Untamed Mansion. Hmm. Poker slopping it up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and uh, we decided to eat some delicious breakfast, and what we're going to do is just do a Q&A. So we uh, put on Alan's Instagram, Untamed Strength, uh, just some questions you guys wanted to be answered. So we're going to eat and uh, just kind of spit back and forth some answers to your questions while Polka sits here and looks at us in disgust. <clears throat> do you eat the same on days you don't train? Uh, for me, right now, pretty much. Um, if I were to be cutting, I would probably eat less on days that I'm not training. But for right now, I'm training for Strongman Nationals, which is coming up soon. So trying to make sure that my body's fueled. And uh, every day, I've just been trying to get in a good amount of calories to feel good and perform as optimally as possible. <clears throat> right now, yes. I eat the same. Uh, training days, not training days. Okay. Questions for you. Is this is it necessary for someone interested in Olympic lifting to hire a coach? I think it would be a good idea to get a coach who knows what they're talking about, especially when you're starting. Because if you're training on your own and you are making... Uh, you know, you're doing the wrong form over and over again. It takes a lot more time, I would say, to get out of a bad habit than just start off by making a good one. So I always recommend, if you guys can, get a coach who knows what they're talking about, obviously has the background in it, um, and have them give you a, their eyes instead of just trying to do it on your own or, or not seeing uh, what a coach would probably see. Favorite Adam Sandler movie? <coughs> uh, I can't even like think of any, I don't know, Big Daddy? Big Daddy? Yeah. That one's not... It's more like a, just a classic, I feel like. What, what's yours? Um, I like uh, The Water Boy. Oh, and, God, yeah. Uh, there you go. Yeah. That's got to be number one. Billy really <laughs> Madison. Right. Probably my two top Adam Sandler movies. Yeah, change my answer. <laughs> Those two, definitely. What Mama Don't Know Won't Hurt Her. What would you say is the most important criteria that defines a good coach? His strength, knowledge, communication, etc. I think being a good coach is many facets, um, but I think the ability to understand and communicate with people uh, is a big one. You could be the smartest coach in the world, but if you can't relay your message the right way to the right person, you're never going to be able to get the, the outcome that you want. So I would say what I look for in a good coach is being able to communicate with people, understand the person, and how to communicate them best. <clears throat> yeah, I agree. I think that uh, uh, further, I think a coach, if it's just not just a strength training coach, but like a powerlifting coach or a strongman coach, should have some experience uh, competing in that sport. That should go without saying, but uh, I've you know heard cases where they've never done powerlifting meets. Uh, not that they have to be you know like world class, but uh, to guide someone through a powerlifting meet or prepping for it or a strongman competition, it's helpful if they've done it themselves. I got sick for three weeks. How do I get back into training? Do it. Get back into training. Um, yeah. I don't know. No secret. I wouldn't like, uh, you know, if you're on a program, I wouldn't like pick up where you're supposed to be. I would probably go back three weeks and start there. And if you're using RPE, as long as the intensity or the efforts there, the RPE, uh, you're good to go. So I don't think anything, you should really change anything. What is the most difficult thing about running a gym? You can take that however you want. I would say for me personally is, I mean, I know this is probably cliche, but just doing everything, you know, like there's so much more than, I think most people just think, oh, I get to hang out in the gym all day. Like that's, that's the life and the dream, but. Like we've been talking about, especially on the podcast, there, there are things you have to address with the members. You got to do the social media. You got to do the bills. You got to clean the gym. So you wear all the hats when you run a business. Um, and you think you probably know that until you actually are running it, that it's kind of a big deal on all the things that you go into it. But it's 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 hard, but I mean, I, I love the challenge. So it's you learn a lot. Uh, but I'd say I think that's probably one of the biggest challenges is just constantly doing it all and trying to make it all work. Uh, the best you can. I think that the hardest thing, maybe not right now, but since owning a gym, is 
getting people or convincing people to sign up, <laughs> to actually like buy into it. That's the hardest thing. Um, why should they go to your gym and not somewhere else? Um, it's kind of easy when if, you know to create a gym or to it's easy to buy equipment if you have the money, um, and it's easy to like show up. It's easy to train people. It's you. It's kind of difficult to convince someone that they need to sign up, or just someone that comes in uh, out of the blue, taking a peek around. It's just, that's that was the biggest challenge for me. I guess being a salesman and trying to get them to actually sign up. So we have, I would say, a numerous amount of pain questions. This could be low back pain, knee pain, elbow pain, face pain. Alan, what would be your tip to the general pain consensus with what's going on? How should people handle their pain? I posted a video that Austin Baraki did. Uh, at one of his seminars, I just put the camera up and recorded it. He talks about the four steps to managing pain. So go check out that video. Um, but you would make adjustments, continue training, but make small adjustments, such as changing the weight on the bar, uh, changing the range of motion, possibly changing the exercise from a low bar squat to a high bar squat to a front squat. Um, and then uh, the fourth one, Joey Quiz, what's the fourth one? When Shay said regulate the int or manage the intensity, uh, change range of motion, exercise selection. Mm. Uh, don't catastrophize or catastrophize the. Yeah. I'm asking you because I don't remember. Oh. <laughs> I think the first one was... Uh, don't freak out? No, the first one, don't freak out. Reassurance, I think it was the first oh. one. Uh, remain positive. Yeah, don't freak out. Um, but yeah, check out the video. Okay, this one's for you. What are the major setup differences of cleans and deadlifts? Typically for uh, the clean, your hips are going to be lower. So your knees are going to be a little bit more forward. <clears throat> in relation to your elbows on the with your hands on the bar um, not all Olympic lifters but it's a good majority of Olympic lifters have a wider grip on the barbell than they would if they were doing a deadlift um, you have to remember in a clean you're you're jumping where and leaving the ground you know sometimes where in a deadlift you're not um, so it's more of a jump sort of motion than it would be just a uh, hinge or pull. Who is your favorite? Big Z, Eddie, Brian, or Hathor? And why? Big Z, Eddie, Brian, or Hathor? Uh, Brian, 100%. Cool. Because I'm patriotic. He is American. Uh, yeah. Can you lose weight and train for strength? parentheses, strongman at the same time. I think that it's very hard to do both at the same time uh, unless you are very undertrained or obese and that you have a lot of body fat to lose while you can gain strength and muscle or typically the best candidate will be someone who is an unexperienced lifter who is obese to do both at the same time. But for myself, um, if I want to focus on strength, I need to focus on strength, eat enough food to support that. And if I want to lose weight, I got to focus on that and not so worry so much about if my strength is going to increase. <laughs> and I seem to be touched by that. And uh, I, know, I used to get emotional too when I thought about <coughs> strength gains and cutting. Um, sorry. It's okay. I agree. Uh, I think the more overweight and obese you are and the weaker you are, the easier it is to lose weight and gain strength. Alan, what takes up most of your time? Whoa. That's deep. Life takes up all of my time. What takes up the most time? I don't know. Probably... Oh, and then uh, video editing. I'm just going to say, being on my computer takes up most time. That's what I uh, allot most of my time to. 
Why is my first rep on the deadlift the hardest in a set, sometimes harder than the last? That's not <clears throat> uncommon. That's like, I think most people, especially if you're doing like a uh, touch and go or like a you know semi touch and go to where you just set the weight down, pause for a second, and come back up. Um, it could be that you're just way out of position on the first rep and you're able to get into a better position on the second and uh, the subsequent reps, but it's not uncommon uh, to have a slow first rep because it's you're picking up from a dead stop. Whereas uh, after the first rep, you might you know uh, brace at the top and then when you set it down, you're a little more prepared. So okay, this one's coming from Rackmaster. How often, days in a week, should a person work out and how long? Hours in a day. Why do so many gym bros think that working out five to seven days a week, three to five hours a day, is the only optimal way to work out? That's not living, in my opinion. I don't know who is working out five to seven days a week for three to five hours a day. That's pretty, that's a lot of time spent in the gym. Uh, unless you're a teenager with you know nothing to do, uh, or you're getting paid to do it, that's a long time. But, I was gonna say, I think I actually have a couple teenagers at the gym. <laughs> yeah, do that. Are, are doing that. <laughs> um, there is no straight answer that says how often should you work out. There's no straight answer to say how long should the workout be. Um, but I will say that there's not, um, there's not. You know, three, four, or five days would be like a general recommendation from me, but there's not to say that one's better than the other, especially if the total work in a seven day period is the same. Uh, you might squat, bench, and deadlift all in one day, or you spread it out over multiple days. Um, so you could certainly work out six days a week if you did, you know, I'm gonna do a squat and a bench. And then the next day I'll do uh, some lower body accessories and a press. Next day I'll do deadlift and whatnot. Uh, so it's just spreading the workout uh, throughout the day or throughout the week, but uh, no. If you and if and when it, it all comes down to if you don't want to spend three to five hours a day, five to seven days a week in the gym, don't. Nobody's telling you that's the optimal way to work out. So Rackmaster, maybe you should stop listening to those people. <clears throat> Joey, how in the hell are your arms so big? Do you any direct arm work, and how much of it? Do you see this? That is a medium hoodie he's wearing, <laughs> and it is tight. The key is really to wear extra small shirts. I'm actually 5'8", and uh, 175 pounds, <laughs> with really tight shirts on all the time. Now, uh, pretty much just lift big compound movements. Um, I've always had big arms since I was younger. It's what people would say if they were to say, ha, huh, what did Joey have? They would say big legs and big arms. Um, so that's kind of just been the way I was born. Uh, but I do do arms on Fridays, every Friday, with my gym, more for the sake of just uh, having fun and uh, growing the community aspect of the gym. Uh, but, you know, I would say if there, there are some arm gains to be made, that would be maybe when it's happening with direct arm work. Other than that, just, uh, you know, lots of big compound movements that you guys see in the training vlogs. You doing your arms down? Nope, I probably should. No, I don't. Nothing against it. I say, what, do you, what do you think about direct arm work? Yeah, I think that if you want bigger arms, you need to train your arms. Uh, direct arm work. So, I would be on the Juji side of the Brian Alzeru Juji debate. <laughs> and that uh, direct arm work, uh, yeah, I think so. But I'm not an expert on big arms, so probably shouldn't ask me. Um, I just really don't do it because of time. Uh, once I'm done with bench squat, deadlifts or whatever, I'm like, alright, I gotta get out of here. I think this question is actually on Alan's page, but I'm gonna ask it anyway. It was... If Alan Thrall and I would go to one concert together, what would that concert be? Adele. Ah, oh, I thought you were going to say it with me. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, I think that we, uh, as far as music that you like, music that I like, I think if we were a Venn diagram, we would meet in the middle on some metalcore. 
we were talking about kill switch engage and all that remains, something like that. Yeah. Would you ever go to a Slipknot concert? Yeah. Yeah. I, I have it on my bucket list to go to a Slipknot concert. I feel like that would be a lot of fun. You can only listen to either death metal or thrash metal for the rest of your life. Which one do you choose? Uh, I pick thrash metal. Same. Yeah, thrash. Do you use coffee, Copenhagen, marijuana, or creatine under your foreskin? <laughs> what? <laughs> That's a real question. Oh my God. <laughs> D, all of the above. <laughs> I use uh, coarse ground coffee. <laughs> What's your favorite deadlift variation? Personally. Probably like a big tire or a wagon wheel deadlift. Would be my favorite. I wouldn't say that was the uh, most useful for me. Probably a, uh, probably a pause deadlift would be most useful, but it's kind of <laughs> boring. Um, so either a wa it's the extreme, either a wagon wheel deadlift, uh, like below the knee, um, more so than rack pulls. I'm not crazy about rack pulls. Uh, or... I actually like to do a high deficit, like one and a half to three inches. Um, I've been enjoying that lately. Yeah, so there you guys have it. That's our uh, breakfast Q&A, just trying to make the world a stronger and better place. Um, really pumped about all the videos that have come out. I don't know where this video is going to be in the line of what's come out, but make sure you are subscribed to Mr. Thrall's channel. Follow him on the Instagram, on Tame Strength, and uh, it's been a blast. So we will see you next time.